Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. We're gonna get this day started with an unboxing, but first uh, I have to actually go get my box. I got the box! And I'm back. Uh, I got stuck in Texas really quick, but uh, I did get my box, so I am excited about this. And like I said the other day, a week or so ago, that there's really not a lot of animals available out there. And I'll be honest with you, sales have been so crazy at BHB. Uh, that last shipment we got, we sold a lot of it, the vast majority of it. And we still have some amazing snakes available that we produced, some of the ones left from that last shipment. But the fact is, is that we decided we were gonna just buy what we could get. Because again, you know, hatching isn't still for another couple months so we want to make sure we don't completely run out of stuff and this is some pretty cool animals so the selection wasn't quite as much as normal but we did get some pretty cool stuff at least Lori did I don't know what she bought I mean she always just said she said hey I got what they had left so let's just go ahead and take a look and see what she's got going on here uh, and I tell you what let's see the first bag okay oh there's some pretty snakes in there that's for sure wow these are these are very nice snakes Let's see if I can take a guess really quick. Wow, that one is cool. This is definitely a super enchi pinstripe something. And uh, and then these look like banana spinner blasts, maybe calicos. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bag right here. So what did we have? We had a banana spinner and a super enchi lemon blast. So yeah, this was a super enchi pinstripe, but it also is pastel. I missed on the pastel part. And then this says banana spinners. Wow, those are incredible. They almost look like spinner blast, which would be the pastel added to it. But nevertheless, beautiful steak. So I tell you what, uh, first bag was pretty impressive. Lori did a good job so far, but we have two boxes full of snakes to open up. So we still have ways to go. And again, these guys are looking amazing. That's one nice thing about getting snakes from my friend this time of year, is I know they're going to be really well started and look absolutely incredible. That last shipment we had, literally, they were set up a couple days later and they ate their first meal and they just crushed it right after that. So they look really good. And again, I always love trying to guess on these, right? So I try not to look at what's in the bag just so I can kind of pull them out and see if my skills are any good, if you know what I mean. So what we have here, oh, this is nice. This looks like, gosh, I almost think that that's like a queen bee calico, or if not, a killer bee calico there. This is definitely looks like a candino right here, and then maybe a lemon blast banana. So let's go see what we got. First thing we have is a killer bee calico. So it wasn't a queen bee, but a killer bee calico. A banana lemon blast, which is what I said there, and a candino. Moving on to the next bag here. Here. This is a ripper, whatever it is. This looks like maybe a banana super enchi, maybe something else. I don't know. That's amazing. This looks like another probably killer bee calico, I would think. Maybe there's something else in it. Not sure. This one's a little bit tough. I don't know what this one is. This is definitely a banana. Oh my gosh. I don't know what that is. That's banana woma. I, I, I honestly don't even, I've got to take a look because I'm completely befuddled by that one. All right. So we've got a killer bee enchi. That would be this one here. So instead of a killer bee calico, there's a killer bee enchi. Oh no, it's a killer bee enchi calico. So, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Of course, we had that banana super enchi. That's what I said. This is the one that I was confused about. Had no idea. This is a banana lesser pewter bee. Wow, that's amazing. So that's a pastel, it's a cinnamon, it's a lesser, it's a spider. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of genes in there. That's a really cool snake. I had no idea. There was just no way I was going to guess all those genes, to be honest with you. But nevertheless, still super, super cool. One bag to go in this box, and then one more box to go. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have here without looking at the bag. Okay, so right off the rip, I can definitely see that we have a beautiful pastel clown right here. That's for sure. This looks like uh, maybe, I don't know, banana pastel maybe? Banana green pastel not sure this one's a beaut right here oh my god oh my gosh look at that snake right there that's got to be a pied cinny i'm imagining oh my gosh that thing is cool so let's go see if i'm close on this last one we had a pastel clown right uh, banana pastel, I said banana pastel, and a cine pie. So there you go. Look like I nailed on that. So one more box to go. And box number two. All right, here we go. I feel like this is cool. This is, I didn't expect to get as much as we did, to be totally honest with you. Like I said, just with the off season and with sales being as good as they've been lately with, you know, you guys are buying snakes. Wow, that's really cool. This is definitely a, I'm going to say a lesser 
Super Enchi. I'm not sure, but that looks like a lesser Super Enchi. I think this is actually maybe the same animal, just not as extreme. So I think there might be two of these guys. And then this looks like just a banana something. Just a, it looks like kind of a normal banana slash banana pastel, something like that. Let's see what we got here. All right, and what do we have? We have a pastel candino. What? So, oh, so this is a pastel candino. Not a banana. Wow, that's a cool animal. And these are Queen Bee Super Enchies. So this is a pastel. It's an Enchi. It's a lesser and it's a spider. That's what those are. Wow, those are really beautiful snakes. All right, last bag. Woo! Okay, that's a banana pastel Enchi lesser butter-ish thing. Looks like this is maybe just like a Queen Bee maybe? Uh, and is that it for this bag? Yeah, that's it. So we just have one Queen Bee Enchi. So this is a Queen Bee Enchi. And then one banana butter Enchi. So yep, there you go. So there it is, guys. Beautiful shipment of snakes. Blew me away. Was not expecting this many cool animals. So uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Uh, and I'm heading back to Texas. Where's my hat? What is up guys? So I was doing my regular rounds, walk around doing making sure I get everything cleaned up around here, checking on certain cages and stuff like that. And man, I I, I just can't even tell you, I saw this adorable, cute little face. And as always, just like with Brian and Bella and me and Hint and Daddy, you see them do cute little things like that, you just can't help but say hello. I, I call you so freaking cute. Come on. Oh, he's such a good boy. Oh, hi. You just want nothing but attention, do you, buddy? I, I can't wait till you guys get a chance to come back and see the Reptarium and really get a chance to really get to, get to see him just like we did Bella, because now for sure I have nothing but confidence that he's gonna be great to say hi to anybody and everybody. We've been sort of like speculating what we could potentially do with this guy and like, and maybe even like do some really cool like agility sort of stuff, kind of like a doggy uh, sort of course thing. But one of the things that I had actually seen on Crushfield, shout out to Tom, he had actually did uh, with his Rhino Iguana, he has this little like, almost like a cat lure with like a little tassel at the end of it and and his his, his iguanas would chase after it he'd bite it then spit it out like it was just a game to him and i think this guy is definitely would definitely love that game i i could see him running around this place all over just like just left, left in every little thing just like he does my face we're going to take you guys along this journey sort of figure out what we're doing just like with all the other animals just see how we do it step by step we're going to also take you guys along with all the failures oh you found the food did you oh you little bugger you're a little butt yeah, he found out where the food was at. Come here, buddy. Looks like we got a little children's python that just laid a clutch of eggs. Let's go ahead and pull her down. Oh yeah, it looks like a nice clutch of eggs right there. Whoo, I tell you what, that is amazing. I love children's pythons. Come on, mama, you're such a good mom. I tell you what, she was a good mom. Laid a beautiful clutch of eggs right there. Whoo, -hoo, doggy, I tell you what, that is pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and get these off here. Might be able to get them. Whoop. Troll one little one, we'll just know that's right there. We we'll probably can't let just to make sure. Throw these over here. The interesting thing about children's pythons, and of course you can see mom is just beautiful. Again, a little dwarf python from Australia. But you know, I think I produced my first children's python back, I don't know, when I was maybe like 17, 18 years old. Uh, I hate to say that, but that was a long time ago. And you know, some snakes get like more valuable. Some snakes get less valuable. Just depends, you know, they become more common, whatever. Baby children's pythons go for about a hundred bucks. Back then, they went for about a hundred bucks. So it's just weird that 30 years later, this animal is still as cool as ever, still being produced in pretty good numbers, uh, is basically the exact same price. Hasn't went up, hasn't went down. So it's pretty cool to be working with them for all these decades, that's for sure. So regardless, she had a beautiful clutch of eggs. Looks like we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 eggs. And that is the last children's python of the year. I think we still have a few more spotted pythons to produce, including gratted spotted, but uh, I think 
think that that's the last children's for the year. You guys ready for some colubrid eggs? Let's go ahead and jump right in. Of course, this is a het snow corn and a het scaleless corn snake, and it's actually bred to a scaleless snow corn snake. Pretty small clutch of eggs for a corn snake here, to be totally honest with you, but nevertheless, they all look really good. Just good job, mom. And I've mentioned before that sometimes the scaleless stuff is a little bit smaller clutches. Just depends on how much corn snake influence is in it because there's some emery rat in that bloodline. So the emery rat has smaller amount of eggs. So uh, we'll go ahead and set these eggs up really quick. And it uh, looks like they're 100% fertile, which is really good. Two, four, five eggs, not bad. And that male, that scaleless snow male, which I'll show you right now, has just been a really good stud animal. I mean, he's fathered a handful of clutches already this year and they've all been fertile. So it's just such a goofy looking snake. <laughs> you know, that snow, that white animal without scales definitely looks bizarre, but uh, he's been a good snake so far. Another corn snake clutch right here. This girl is actually a het strawberry sunkiss. Now the strawberry I've mentioned before is almost like a recessive hypogene that's kind of strawberry colored. The sunkiss is kind of a pattern mutation. Looks like this girl might have a couple retained eggs in her right here. I can see it right at the top right here. See that bump right down there? That is actually a retained egg. She is definitely done laying her clutch. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead, leave this girl in her enclosure for the next couple days. See if she actually passes that egg. If not, we'll just try to move that down and see if we can't express that egg out. Unfortunately, that happened. That's the first egg bounding we've seen this year, uh, and it's kind of higher up. If it's right down by the vent, we can usually just go in what they call needle aspirate or massage aspirate out the egg. Uh, being that far up, we don't know what's gonna happen. We'll give it a few days. I'll keep you guys posted. Nevertheless, she did lay a beautiful clutch of eggs. Let's tell you that much. We'll candle a couple of these right here just because they rolled around a little bit. In particular, these two right here that are uh, on their own. But wow, look at this clutch. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 eggs. 18 eggs, one egg stuck inside her. So fingers crossed she passes that egg or we can get it out of there within the next couple days. So uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Remember yesterday when I fed RJ that big fish he seemed to love it well guess what he didn't obviously love it nearly as much as I thought because uh, it's sitting right there so he uh, he seemed to kind of juice it by squeezing it getting the guts out but then he left it and it's kind of all messy in there so now I have no choice but to go in and get it uh, and I'm gonna have to somehow skim up all this nastiness I'm not even sure exactly what I'm gonna do to be honest with you hey you calm down you calm down you stay there you stay there Woo! RJ Calm down. Calm down. Thanks. Thanks. Stop. RJ, go. Move. Move it over there, buddy. Keep you going. Keep you going. Hey, get over there. Get over there. I don't need any hassle from you. You stay. Hey, you stay. 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 That's what I'm talking about. Get over in your corner. <laughs> He's punished now. Oh my god. This is gross as could be. Like I said, I'm just going to take this out. I don't know why. Oh my gosh. Look what he did to it. Oh my gosh. That gives you an idea what it would feel like if you ever got chomped on by that guy. I definitely don't want to ever be in that position, but uh, that's pretty gross. Like I said, I'm going to have to somehow maybe come in here with the skimmer and just skim off all the nastiness on the top here. But all in all, uh, not too bad. I don't know why he didn't eat. Oh, this is so gross. Oh, oh, that's even grosser. I don't even know how to get that out of there. Then we have to come in with a net and just skim the top off. So thanks a lot, RJ, to making my day more busy. But uh, nevertheless, I guess next time I'm not gonna feed him fish. Let's see if Bowser wants a big old fish right now. He seems interested. Come on, Bowser. So Bowser took it. Wasn't super aggressive, but now I'm not sure exactly what he's gonna do. If he's gonna try to rip it apart, if he's just gonna hang onto it in his mouth. I don't know. It's uh, something I've never tried to feed him, a big fish like this before. But. Uh, and there he goes, going away under his thing, so we'll just have to check back and see if he ate it. No idea what's gonna happen. Pretty exciting clutch right here. This is the very first time we've ever had a clutch from this particular bloodline. We bought these off my friend Forrest that was actually working with what he called a redline albino. Just a polygenically bred animal that just has more red in it, right? That doesn't have that white. So a lot of times albino corn snakes like this will have like white around the saddles. This guy actually doesn't. So it's just, again, going the other way. Some 
sometimes you breed the candy cane corns where it has lots of white. This is a polygenic phase that actually has less white and going the other way. And we've got a beautiful clutch of eggs here. So this is the start of a new project that probably is gonna realistically take us another eight or 10 years to really develop it to the point where maybe you have an all red kind of cool albino corn snake. We'll see what happens. Regardless, it's two, four, six, eight, nine eggs. Nine eggs is a good way to start. And again, the very first time we produce from this bloodline. So uh, that's pretty exciting. And the last Kluber clutch for the day is actually this Pueblin milk snake. We've had some pretty good Pueblin milk snake clutches and we've had some pretty small Pueblin milk snake clutches this year. So let's see what this one's gonna be right here. Oh yeah. Whoo, doggy, I tell you what, that is the clutch that you want from a Pueblin. Wow, that is a big clutch, and that's a really pretty animal. It's got kind of wide white bands, kind of heading towards that Oreo with just a little bit more red and stuff like that, but a really, really nice one. They used to actually call those sock-headed Pueblins. You just don't see very many good sock-headed Pueblins anymore, which is weird, so hopefully we can work that project back in. Regardless, we have two, four, six, eight, ten eggs. That is a good clutch of Pueblins and a great way to end the Clubert eggs for the day. Well, that's pretty crazy. Bowser crushed that big fish. I mean, it's gone. I didn't see it because he was underneath the log there, but uh, I just searched around and there's definitely no fish there. So good job, Bowser. That's a nice big meal. You know, guys, I always love unboxing snakes, so uh, it never gets old. And, and by the way, remember I talked about redoing the bathroom over at BHB? My stuff came in the mail from Home Depot, so I'm gonna get onto that project sometime soon. I'm not exactly sure. The only problem is, is I have some cracked tiles in here that I don't know if I have enough tiles because some of them came in cracked. We'll have to see what I can do, but regardless, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more unboxing, here's an entire playlist of unboxing. Up here, you can show some support to my podcast channel called Checking In. Please subscribe to that. Over here, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Turn those post notifications on if you don't mind. I truly appreciate you guys and hope you have an amazing day. And remember to be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.